Welcome to the Philips ECG training video. The purpose of this video is to provide practical clinical applications guidance on monitoring ECG with the Philips MR patient care monitors. We will review the types of ECG electrodes, the types of ECG cables, proper skin preparation and electrode placement, ECG module placement, and tips for troubleshooting ECG. Before placing ECG leads on the patient, you want to make sure you pick the correct electrode with the correct ECG cable. For the MR400, there are three types of ECG cables that pair with the three different electrodes. The standard ECG cable is designed for patients weighing more than 22 pounds or 10 kilograms and is made for quick application with the use of the single patch or standard electrode. The wide ECG cable, also known as the CV ECG cable, is designed for patients weighing more than 22 pounds or 10 kilograms and is best for female and overweight patients where placement would be difficult using the single patch electrode. The wide ECG cable should be used with the multiple patch ECG electrodes, also known as the CV electrodes, which are the electrodes that are separate. The neonatal ECG cable is designed for infants weighing less than 10 kilograms and should be used with the neonatal electrode. For the MR200, there are five types of ECG cables. Short Standard Short Wide, also known as CV Short Neonatal Long Wide, also known as Advanced Filter and Long Extra Wide, also known as Advanced Apps, that pair with the three different electrodes Single Patch, or Standard ECG Electrodes Multiple Patch or CV ECG electrodes, or neonatal ECG electrodes. For this training, we will focus on the three most versatile and commonly used cables, the long wide ECG cable, the long extra wide ECG cable, and the short neonatal ECG cable. The long wide ECG cable is designed to minimize the gradient artifact on the ECG trace for all patients greater than 10 kilograms. This cable can be used with either the multiple patch or single patch ECG electrode. The long extra wide ECG cable is designed to allow for wide electrode placement on patients with greater surface area of the chest, such as female or overweight patients. This cable can be used with either the multiple patch or single patch ECG electrode. The neonatal ECG cable is designed for infants weighing less than 10 kilograms and should be used with the neonatal ECG electrode. Tip. Only use expression MR electrodes with the MR200 and the MR400, as this will minimize the possible risk of electrode heating during MRI procedures and reduce the amount of MRI-generated artifacts on the ECG waveform. Also, not using the correct ECG cable with the correct electrode may affect your ECG output. You may get increased artifact. Tip. Inspect your ECG cable and ECG lead wires for signs of damage. If they are damaged, replace the ECG cable. Damaged ECG lead wires or ECG cable could result in increased artifact. If the cable is connected to the electrodes on a patient and you see either a red RA, LA, or LL on the monitor, which stands for right arm, left arm, or left leg, this means that specific lead wire is broken and the cable needs to be replaced. After you have chosen which cable and electrode to use, the next step is to prep the patient. Proper electrode preparation is critical to ECG performance. The result of poor electrode preparation will be poor ECG monitoring performance. Be sure to check the date on the electrode to ensure that it is not expired. Next, it is important to shave or trim any patients with excessive hair. Large amounts of hair will inhibit a good conduction between the electrodes and the patient's skin. Also, if the hair creates an arc behind the electrode, it can be a burn hazard. After the patient is shaved or trimmed as needed, use the skin prep gel on the areas where the electrodes will be placed and briskly rub the selected sites with the gauze pad. The skin may turn pink. This gel is an exfoliator and removes dead skin cells. Wipe excess after scrubbing. 
Tips The Skin Prep Gel will clean and increase blood flow to the skin, which will improve the ECG performance. You will be less likely to get artifact. Alcohol swabs break down the conductive properties of the skin and degrade the ECG performance, so do not use alcohol to prep the patient's skin. Tip. Connect the electrode cable first to the electrode before placing at the patient to avoid that electrode gel will be pressed out beneath the electrode, which will result in possible less connectivity. When using the MR400 and the multiple patch ECG electrodes, you will go to the imaginary nipple line on the left side of the chest and place two in line between the left sternal border and the left nipple. Then place the other two below on the lower half. All of them will be on the left side. Do not center them on the chest. If the patient has a large breast, the lower electrodes go under the breast tissue, not on top of it. When using the MR400 and the single patch ECG electrode, the top half of the electrode will be in line with the imaginary nipple line. The patch will be on the left side and not in the center of the chest. When using the MR400 and the neonatal ECG electrode, the patch will be placed in the center of the chest. When using the MR200 and the multiple patch ECG electrodes, you will go to the imaginary nipple line on the left side of the chest and place one on each side of the nipple. Then place the other two below, on the lower half. All of them will be to the left of the sternum. Do not center them on the chest. If the patient has large breasts, the lower electrodes go under the breast tissue not over it. When using the MR200 and the single patch electrode, place it below the imaginary nipple line. The patch will be on the left side and not in the center of the chest. For patients with larger breasts, place the single patch electrode underneath the breast tissue. When using the MR200 and the neonatal ECG electrode, place the electrode in the center of the chest. Tip. Sometimes ECG artifact is due to poor electrode connection. If electrode contact is poor, then remove and discard the electrode and repeat the site preparation process according to the instructions above. Never reuse an electrode as its adhesive will not securely adhere to the skin. When attaching the ECG lead wires to the electrode, squeeze each clip open and then place the clip onto the electrode contact and release. Be sure to attach the clips to the electrode contacts as shown on the color-coded diagram found on the ECG cable. After placing the electrodes, make sure the ECG lead wires do not cross or loop. When lead cables form a conductive loop in contact with the patient's tissue, minor to severe burning can result. 
Once you have placed the electrodes, you will want to review your ECG waveform for signal strength. Refer to the ECG reference line on the monitor to see if you have good signal strength and minimal artifact. For the MR400, the ECG signal should be at least 1 millivolt, that is, the waveform should be equal to the size of the scale indicator. For the MR200, the QRS complex should be approximately 2 millivolts on the display. That means the signal should be twice the size of the scale indicator, a 1 millivolt reference at any given scale setting. If it is not, then you will most likely get artifact during the MR scan. If you prep the patient's skin and place the electrodes correctly but are still not getting a 1 millivolt ECG signal, attempt to change the lead view. Lead 2 is the default lead. Cycle through the additional lead views available until a 1 millivolt signal amplitude is obtained. Tip. In some cases, a 1 millivolt ECG signal cannot be achieved due to patient physiology. Finally, before the MR scan begins, place the ECG module on or near the patient as close to the bore isocenter as possible, considering the scan to be performed. Place the ECG module outside of the bore if possible. If the modules can be placed outside the bore, positioning at the bore isocenter is not necessary. Keep the wireless module outside the field of view. Place the ECG module on a cushioned surface such as a washcloth or towel to minimize MR vibrations. If you start your scan and you begin to get artifact due to certain MR sequences, you can change the filter to help reduce artifact. The MR200 and the MR400 have filter modes that are designed to remove gradient artifact generated by the MR system. There are four available filter options for the MR400. Default filter is the monitor's default filter and provides the best performance on most MR sequences. Advanced 1 filter provides the best performance for more challenging MRI sequences, such as neurological and cardiovascular scans. Advanced 2 filter provides an alternative for more challenging MRI sequences, such as neurological and cardiovascular scans. Cycle through the filters to determine which filter minimizes artifact. Monitor filter is a filter mode on the MR400 that is useful during patient preparation, transporting, and gathering baseline ECG, but is not meant for use during active MRI sequences. Do not use monitor filter while monitoring in the MRI room. For the MR200, there are five filter modes available. Primary filter is the monitor's default filter and provides the best possible performance during echo train type MRI sequences. Secondary filter provides the best possible performance on most non-cardiovascular MRI sequences. Cardiac filter provides the best possible performance during cardiovascular MRI procedures that involve steady state free precession imaging with balanced gradient sequences on 1.5 and 3.0T MR systems. Advanced filter provides the best possible performance on 1.5 and 3.0T MR systems during MRI sequences, such as neurological and cardiovascular. Advanced filter utilizes an adaptive filter scheme for removal of gradient artifact generated by MR systems. Cycle through the listed filters to determine which filter minimizes artifact. You can also attempt to change the lead view if you begin to get artifact while you are scanning. Tip. Artifact could be caused by several factors. This includes use of alcohol-based products during patient prep, use of an electrode that is expired or dried out, use of wrong or damaged ECG cable leads, improper placement of the electrode, Excessive distance between electrodes when using multiple patch electrodes. Placing the MR400 inside the 5000 Gauss line. Or the MR200 inside the 1500 Gauss line. Placing the ECG module inside the field of view. MR vibrations from the magnet table affecting the ECG module. Incorrect filter mode. Scan sequence parameters. 
improper connections of the ECG lead cable to electrode contact locations. Routing the ECG cable adjacent to the body coil or underneath an extremity coil. Be sure to follow all instructions for ECG preparation to minimize artifact and optimize ECG signal strength. For additional instructions on ECG monitoring, please refer to your monitor's instructions for use. Tip. Consult the How to Prep poster for above-mentioned procedures and guidelines. Contact your local sales representative to get a digital copy of this poster, which can be placed at the patient prep location or MRI suite.